Word up internet, this is Popcast, a uh, ongoing yo-yo vlog series. Each episode I focus on uh, a concept for yo-yo tricks, something that you can take and explore uh, much more. This particular episode is going to be all about responsive yo-yo play. Um, my name is Dr. Popular and I'm a crowd-sponsored yo-yo pro who, uh, who does uh, these videos for you. Um, big shout out to Greg Knowles, Steven Schreiber, and Sam Brandt who are uh, some of my Patreon sponsors. Big shout out to all of my Patreon sponsors who help make this show possible. If you're interested in sponsoring it and getting a big discount on yo-yos from drpopular.com, you can go to patreon.com slash docpop uh, for a chance to just help support the show. I really appreciate it. Let's get into it. Um, I have been really inspired by the project that Ed Hoponic and Drew Tetz have recently launched. It's the Bandalorus project on Instagram. Uh, each video they do is actually a tutorial on how to do um, responsive yo-yo tricks. Now this is modern responsive play, very different than old school fixed axle tricks where we used to take um, you know, a Duncan butterfly and try to see if we could do spirit bomb or you know, just sleeping tricks. These are tricks that are more about a new style of yo-yoing where you're focusing on um, kind of balance and uh, catching the, the yo-yo when it's not spinning doing tricks from there. This will like make a lot more sense when, uh, when we start getting into the tour tutorial. Uh, just, just a heads up, the tutorial I'm gonna be using um, this yo-yo, which is called a Legend Wing. Um, yo-yo Factory makes these. It's just a cheap wooden yo-yo fixed axle. Um, this one's gonna be new out of the box. This Doc Pop edition is available on drpopular.com. So if you're interested afterwards in just getting a cheap uh, responsive yo-yo to play around with, or you want a nice art piece, uh, these are just $14 in drpopalu.com. So I'm just going to be using this wooden yo-yo. You can use any responsive yo-yo to do these tricks. Let's get started. Cool. Like I was saying earlier, um, this can be done with any responsive yo-yo. You just want to make sure it's responsive enough that maybe you could do um, stalls or loops with it. Uh, yeah, just that amount of response. If you're using a ball bearing yo-yo and it's not quite that responsive, you're going to have a harder time with this. But you can use a thicker lube to kind of fix that. So the uh, the first trick that we're going to cover is uh, the basic stall, uh, the basic like man on the trapeze stall. It's uh, crazy easy, but um, you might find if you're not used to doing it, you'll have a whole bunch of uh, challenges getting used to breaking old habits. Uh, I was showing this trick to a friend yesterday and he kept trying to do it here and then, you know, tugging it. Uh, so the key to this trick is um, you want to actually throw a breakaway and it's gonna sleep for just a bit, but you wanna make sure it's coming back before your finger goes in. So you don't want it to still be sleeping when your finger's in. You wanna throw and tug and then catch it with your hand. And that, that catch is just gonna be a real simple, you know, man on the trapeze catch. Um, the longer the string is when you do it, uh, the harder it is going to be to regenerate. And the shorter the string is, the harder it is to, to do any extra tricks from here. So your ideal situation is to kind of catch it about here, I think. Uh, that way you can still kind of kick it out, but you also have room to do tricks. Now, um, some of the basic tricks from the stall are things like a pullover. So I'm just going over and then throwing it out. And if you do that in one smooth motion, it looks pretty cool. Um, another one that I saw from uh, Kyle, Kyle Nations uh, on the Bandalores project is this little turn throw. Uh, that can be used to kind of spit you back out into uh, another, another uh, stall. And that move is you're gonna be stall, uh, and then you turn your hand this way. So I'm going from here. Yo-yo uh, hand goes forward, other hand goes behind. And that's going to look like this. You're then going to kick it off and catch it back on a stall. 
Um, after you do that one, what Kyle does is he does the same thing, but he does it forward. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of reversing the direction and catching. So like I said, the, the pullover is fun. Um, you can do a trapeze to his brother. This works out great because the spin is going to always be the correct way. When you're, when you're, when you're landing these, these tricks, uh, first off, you kind of keep your hands kind of close together, kind of like a check mark. That kind of helps stabilize it. If your, your hands are really, if, if your string basically is straight, it's going to make this whole thing harder to balance. So there's quite a bit of give when I catch it. Um, some people might just pop it off, which is doable, but I think really you want to get in the habit of being able to stall it so that you can then later try to do some of the tricks that come around, like the, the pullover. Uh, and when you're doing these tricks, there's a right and wrong direction to it uh, in terms of uh, from a breakaway into a trapeze, that's the right direction. But if for some reason I threw, um, if I threw a power throw and tried catching it, it's going to be way harder to catch uh, for a couple reasons. Um, one of which the string just, it's just on the wrong side. It's, uh, <laughs> I guess you'll kind of get used to it when you, when you throw it, but this is going to be a lot easier. Now, when I go to the brother, it sets me up nicely. So I can just kind of rock back and forth. Uh, I can throw in uh, interesting catches, like an under the arm catch. Speaking of the brother stall, you can also do that uh, same turnaround here to catch again. So this move is kind of cool just for like breaking up your flow. Once you get used to trapeze and its brother, you can add in little pullovers to really make the trick fancy. So those pullovers are here. I'm gonna pop out and here. And when you're doing this one, it helps if your finger is hooked in and pointing towards your stomach so that when you do this unwrap, you don't, you don't have any uh, wrap string here. Uh, so again, that's, I, I kind of hooked my finger in and pointed it, and then I'm just gonna pull over and unwind. So that's the basic of the side style stalls. Um, now let's talk about front style stalls, which I actually think are really rad. Uh, the first one you might think about is the brain twister one. Uh, the bottom mount one, which is basically just power throw, catch. Uh, and just a tip on this, all of these tricks are easier if you do them uh, with more of a bounce. So instead of sleeping the yo-yo, uh, instead of doing this, I think this is way easier if I just go down and up. Uh, I, I can't say why, it's just a little more consistent, I guess. Uh, now, a lot of people want to do the, the brain twister as sort of the, the first forward stall, but I actually think split bottom mount is a lot easier for a stall. I can't, can't tell you why. Uh, for me, at least, it's been a lot easier to kind of get used to this move than this move. So yeah, you can transition from forward to sideways, back to forward. You can do all that stuff. So now that we've talked about stalls, there's actually tricks you can do that start with the stall. So the stall isn't all of the trick itself. One fun one is a split bottom mount, catch and flip. So that trick is split bottom. I'm just gonna kind of go forward and let it fall off my pointer finger. And I'm just gonna catch the yo-yo. So I just caught. You can pull the string if you want, kind of get rid of that excess. And then I'm gonna put a light spin on it and catch it in the forward. So again, split bottom mount, throw forward and catch it, straighten your string, give it a light bit of spin just to keep it stable and catch. And then you can do a, a pull out, pull over dismount. Pull out dismount. Now Ed Haponic has a uh, similar trick where he catches on the back of his hand. Let's just talk about a few more stalls. Um, I really like doing one-handed stalls. So to do the forward one-handed stall, you're just gonna throw a forward pass. Uh, and when the yo-yo is forward, your thumb is going to go uh, here and down. So I'm going to the right, thumb, 
down. Uh, and what's going to happen is when the yo-yo comes out, it's going to it's going to come back to you like this, and it's going to go right in here. Then I like to turn my hand and do it again. Once you're kind of in the groove, you don't even have to move your thumb. You can just keep it on your thumb. An easier one-handed stall might be from the breakaway. It's just throw, and your thumb's going to go down and catch, bam. So again, it's out, thumb just goes down. You're gonna catch here. Uh, the nice thing about the breakaway stall is you can then reverse it. Now note, every time I'm reversing, I'm just gonna go back and forth. Uh, every time I do that, my thumb is gonna change the, the position of where it is on the string. A couple more one-handed stalls for you. Uh, one is the shoot the moon stall, which is the lunar landing. Uh, that's kind of the inspiration for all of these stalls. And it's actually maybe one of the easiest as long as you know how to do shoot the moon. So basically the is gonna go up like that. And on its way back, after you've thrown your forward pass, you hold your thumb out and you catch it. For me, the hardest one-handed stall is just down and up. I can't tell you why that one's so freaking hard for me. All right, let's talk about regenerations and planet style hop tricks. Uh, let's start with the regeneration. Um, when you're doing this move, a thing you're probably gonna do a lot is this one. It's just a, a little regeneration, kick out. It's gonna go under your hand and go back out. Uh, if you're doing it right, the yo-yo won't change plane. The, the, if this was a dark side and a light side, the dark side would always stay the same direction, right? The yo-yo would never flip. Um, this is kind of a, a, a thing that we call planet hops uh, or similar to planet hops. So usually when you're doing a loop-to-loop, -loop, uh, the, the loops are going to go uh, like this. They're always going to be in the same circle. Or when you're doing uh, milk the cow, you're always doing kind of the same round circle. With this type of yo-yo, instead of doing this, you're gonna do this U-shape. And the reason for that is the U-shape keeps the yo-yo from flipping, where the circle always requires the yo-yo to flip in order to set itself up. And that's just a little harder to do with butterflies, and it's not really what we're looking for for these regenerations. So, toss, out, catch. Uh, one of the nice things you might notice too is, uh, even if I have just a little bit of spin here, I can crank it uh, on that regeneration. So uh, a little regeneration helps give you control. Uh, it helps give you um, more of a spin. It's just a nice thing to know. You're gonna kind of be doing this move a lot. You can also do this move uh, forward, obviously. Um, a good way to do it is just here, out, and crank. One thing I really like doing is alternate hand uh, kind of regenerations. Uh, basically, you could do, for instance, the, the alternate hand uh, planet hops, and this is a really stylish way to get into something. Bam. One of the regions I've been liking lately looks like this. Now, uh, basically, uh, I like to do this on the outside of my arm. You can do it on the inside as well, but it looks like this. You're in a split bottom out. You're going to go back. You're going to hop it out. So uh, I'm, I'm basically throwing it down, catch. Uh, when you do that move, uh, it should basically be an outside the arm planet hop um, with this weird pinch string. And then you're just gonna catch it back in the same mount you were in. There's the inside. So you can really uh, kind of break it up between uh, left and right, you know, inside and outside. <laughs> so let's make things a little more interesting here with an outside the arm uh, regeneration. I like to start with a, just a trapeze, go out and catch. So again, this is um, going to be out here and I'm just going to hook 
And I'm trying to do basically that planet hop where I'm not letting the yo-yo flip. Trying. Bam. So if you do it right, you should be back in kind of the breakaway hop. It's a very similar move to this, except it's two hands and on the outside. So I think I talked about shoot the moons earlier. One thing I like to do is an alternate hand shoot the moon, which is nice because then it sets you up for a really nice trapeze. So, so it's just like forward pass, uh, your left hand or your alternate hand is going to go out and you're just going to hook the string. Catch, catch. I can't remember if we've talked about it yet, but one of the things I like to do uh, regeneration wise is from a trapeze, uh, catch, bam. So that's going to go over your hand. You're going to throw it down and you're going to catch it on your middle finger. You're going to hook it back, bam. So with all those other tricks we talked about, I would actually be bummed if I didn't mention stop and go. Uh, it's a classic trick that uh, a lot of modern players don't know just because it's super hard to do with a non-responsive yo-yo. A buy and return yo-yo is gonna be really difficult. So uh, let's just go over this real quick. It's a bottom mount, both hands go together and you pull. Uh, in pulling, all three strings kind of get wound up with the yo-yo. My non-yo-yo hand stays exactly where it is. The finger stays out straight. My yo-yo hand uh, is gonna pull down and I'm gonna kind of put spin back onto the yo-yo. So quick recap, uh, mana trapeze stall, you can do tricks from there. Uh, there's forward pass stuff you can do. Uh, there's regenerations, there's stop and goes, there's alternate hand shoot the moons. There is so much potential for stuff to do here. I didn't even talk about like uh, stalls, uh, back of the hand stalls and stuff like that. But oh, we did talk about the, uh, the one handed moves. So lots of stuff to kind of keep you uh, hopefully full of inspiration. Cool, I hope you like those tricks. Uh, again, I was using just a cheap uh, Legend Wing yo-yo. These are just solid wood yo-yos. They are not take apart. Um, great beater yo-yo. They're fun to customize too. I just recently uh, applied some wood stain to these guys uh, and I'm really curious to see how they age. I've wood stained some other raw yo-yos and they usually look really cool. They're fun to watercolor or use inks on as well. Um, if you are looking for something nicer than a $14 fixed axle yo-yo, uh, there's a couple options out there. There are the Couriers um, by the Hildy Bros. These come uh, in like brass inlay, which is heavier, um, sleeps a little better, maybe a little less uh, responsive for, for this style of tricks. Um, great yo-yo, but uh, maybe the, the lighter weight Courier might be a, a good way to go. There's also a ton of ball bearing responsive yo-yos. So you don't have to have a wooden yo-yo to do these tricks. Matter of fact, you can even do a lot of these tricks with response, with a bind return yo-yos. But if you're looking for something you could actually loop with and to shoot the moons and kind of get a traditional fixed axle responsive feel, I really love the Deep State by One Drop. Um, I love the work that these guys are doing. And speaking of One Drop, next week, I'm actually taking a train, uh, like a, 12 hour train ride to Eugene, Oregon. And I'm gonna hang out with Sean and David making a brand new yo-yo from scratch. Now there's no details yet publicly, but if you're interested in finding out more and getting behind the scenes uh, info about it while it's happening, check out patreon.com slash docpop. Those guys are already seeing um, some of the early conversations I'm having with the One Drop crews. Yeah, let's make a yo-yo, man. As well as uh, some footage I shot with Ed where I told him about my idea and got his feedback on it. So uh, lots of exclusive content there. But otherwise, the next PopCast episode should have that full thing. And, uh, you know, since we're talking about responsive yo-yos and fixed axle yo-yos, I'm just kind of remembering uh, how I actually got into yo-yoing in the first place. It was my 21st birthday and I was making music. Uh, I still am, but I was really thinking music was gonna be my career. So for my 21st birthday, uh, I flew from Nashville, Tennessee to Seattle, Washington 
uh, to then drive down to Olympia, Washington. And I actually had been corresponding with someone from K Records and I thought I was about to get signed. I'd sent them my demo. Um, they said, hey, you should come visit sometime. And I was like, it's happening. So, so I booked this flight out there and I totally thought that um, my whole my whole life was about to change. I was going to be on my favorite record label. It turns out they were just being friendly. They were kind of surprised when I showed up. Uh, you know, we got some coffee. They showed me the, the warehouse. Uh, I met with some other, other labels. I actually met and saw a whole bunch of uh, my favorite musicians perform while I was in town. But what really happened, uh, it was actually maybe a few days before my 21st birthday, I picked up a wooden yo-yo from the Space Needle. Uh, I just wanted a souvenir of the trip and the snow globe was like four bucks and the wooden yo-yo was three bucks. So I bought a wooden yo-yo, my first yo-yo. I was almost 21 at the time. I yo-yoed with it the whole time I was walking around Seattle and Olympia, you know, just doing loop-de-loops and the fog and, um, you know, just kind of playing around with, with yo-yoing and not really knowing any of the tricks to do. I didn't get signed to a record label. But when I flew back to Nashville, I stopped in a mall to get some food at the food court. And this guy was opening a yo-yo store that day. Like the day I came back on like an 8 a.m. flight. I was at the mall at 9 a.m. He was just opening a yo-yo store called Yo Mama's. I had a yo-yo with me. And I was maybe even better than this guy was, who was just like a businessman kind of trying to ride this upcoming yo-yo boom. So he hired me just for a few days a week. Eventually, um, I became full-time there. I quit my job at a cafe. Uh, eventually, I became a regional manager with four yo-yo stores under my belt. I was going around to Chattanooga and Richmond and Charlottesville. Uh, it ended up in St. Louis opening yo-yo stores. Uh, became a, a third-place world yo-yo champion, mostly because I got to stand around uh, all day. And when I wasn't selling yo-yos, I was yo-yoing at the cart. It was, it was life changing. So I thought I was going to get signed to a record label. Instead, um, I actually ended up moving out of Tennessee, which I never thought I would do. Uh, saw, you know, so much of the U S had all of this amazing experience, um, moved to Minneapolis because of the, the yo-yoing, uh, traveled on the West Coast because of the yo-yoing, ended up in San Francisco because of, uh, because of a yo-yo show that was down the street. Someone asked me to do the show, never left. Um, so many amazing things have happened to me all because of like a fixed axle, cheap wooden yo-yo that I got into. So it's kind of fun. Um, again, not really obsessing over nostalgia, but it's fun actually rediscovering yo-yoing, finding this whole new style of yo-yoing to play with. I, I hope uh, I hope you got something out of this video, uh, some ideas, some inspiration. Again, if you're inspired to do anything, go to the Bandolores Project because those guys are going to blow your mind. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Word to your mother. This composition that you're leaving is a work of art To trace the path from the airport to wherever you are Juggle airplanes to taxis to the places you stay Learn your locations from the notes on the stage By coastal, it's not that far If you're never at home, no matter where you are If you're never at home, no matter where you are If you're never at home, no matter where you are